place where nobody will ever die. Some of you might be lonesome, thinking I won't get to go to no funerals. Well, I won't be a bit lonesome, God, when I'm with you. I praise the Lord. Amen. He's got that all prepared. It's a fixed statement. Yes. Satan can't stop it. You can be seated. But let your hearts keep praising the Lord. Let your mind keep praising the Lord. Let your bodies and the body of your body language keep praising the Lord. Because I'll tell you why. The Lord is concerned. For each one of you, I want you to sing that song for us tonight, if you will. You found him on your knees. Have you got it with you? Come on up here. Tonight, I just want you to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's here. You can find him sitting on your seats, your buttocks, or you can find him on your knees. You can find him, Jeffrey, just if you're relaxing in your chair. He's everywhere in that wonderful. You don't have to go hunt and hunt and hunt and dig for him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I just thank God that we're here. Did anybody, has anybody in but me? Look forward to this uh, revival. Let me hear your testimony if you can. While Regan's getting up here, anybody? Nobody in the for Let's close up then. Well, I like to thank the praise of God, and I thank God for this revival. I've been looking forward to it. I know that God's got a great day. Oh, it's going to be our hearts. Our Bible is to be in the wall. Get closer to Him. Yes. Just pray for me that I will be enlightened in this world of sin. Yes. Praise the Lord. 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 Let me sit in the work. I found you down on my knees. You might have found him on a, a log, a stump. You yeah. might have found him in your bathroom. You might have found him in your bedroom. But if you found him, you will never want to let him go. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good evening, everybody. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. Down on my knees, I found Jesus. Down on my knees, I found my Lord. It wasn't on the mountain, nor in the valley, but it was on my knees that I found my Lord. I was
for us tonight? If you have, come on up here. Alicia will be with us tomorrow night, her nor her mother, Ina. They are going to Valley Head, a place I've heard about, but never been that far up in the mountain. But Alexa is going to do a wonderful song for us. But she's going to do more wonderful songs for her grandfather, which is, is he 94? Yeah. 94 years old. He's trying to keep the church alive there in Valley Head. He's got maybe five members or six. But it doesn't matter the numbers, the spirit of God is what matters. So we're going to, we're going to excuse her to go help him out tomorrow night. Praise God.
what he wants us to hear. You know, I wish that more people would bring their children to church. I wish I was brought to church when I was that young. For I could get into God's presence. I'm just so blessed tonight to see the way God is using the young people today. It is so amazing. And God is good. What he can do for her, he can do for me. What he can do for me, he can do for you. There's enough for him to go around for all of you. There's no rain checks going on in God. You might go to grocery store, they might be out something. But I'm here to tell you, my God has got whatever you need.
Wonderful, John. Uh, you know, we kind of was kind of a little bit leery about John there for a while. But right, Larry, say amen. amen. Okay. But John has been here in this church since he was a little tight when Larry and Rose took him from, he was with their grandmother, and then they stayed with him. They, they start letting him play on the piano and guitars and stuff. And he wandered afar and he wandered near. But Robert finally, like I told you, God sent him a good Christian woman. God sent him a mate. That's going to, and, and, and that's what we need. We need to just ask God for what we want. Ask God. And God's able to do it. So, John, can I tell anything else on you? Yeah, you can. I don't care. <laughs> Praise God, we're just glad for you, praise the Lord. And his, his condition, this diabetes thing, it's, he was in the hospital, that, it was 700, wasn't it? Yeah, 740. Wow. Now, so God's bringing him down. He's having his wife to help him, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Anthony can have 
<laughs> and he always called him the beef. Terry called him, he called Anthony the beef. He was so proud of his daddy, uh, uh, Bobby. And I said, I said, Jay, I said, he was a little baby. His daddy brought him to church from the day one that they could get out of the hospital with him. He kept him in church from the day one where he gave him, you know, some things like that. Knuckles, knuckle bikes. And that's exactly what I did to my children. They was in church the whole time, every time I was. And you know what? That's we give them more than what anybody could have left them. Four hundred one k plan for a performance Texas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I said. He said, "I'll go like um, this guy's on the floor." He said, "I'm going to come." His yeah. girl said, "His girl said, you can't go, Dad." She said, "You're on the floor." He said, "Okay." He said, "When's the homecoming?" He said, "I want to be here." I said, "They're coming back." He said, "I said not the minister. They're going to come to eat." And I said, they'll, they'll sing you a song or something. I said, you'll get to meet him. But he said, I want to see him. I said, thank God. Seeing that wonderful, that we're going to meet in heaven. Give him a good hand of welcome. Again. You know, I personally thank God that there's never been a situation that I've cried out to him and he hasn't been there. He's always been more than enough to supply every need. He's always... And it's never, you know, the world always talks about, oh, well, you Christian, you know, you got what you need. But he is. He's a provider. And I don't have just what I need. I have more than what I need. Amen. And I thank God that his word is faithful and that he has showed himself true to me Amen. in this time of season, in this time of testing that I am in. He has been faithful to my family. Yes. And I couldn't praise him anymore. No. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
if it had not been for the shedding of his blood. And if it had not been for God's amazing love, oh, it's plain to see. that I'd be. Tonight, we might as well just 
Hallelujah. 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 We might as well lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, uh, I, I am sorry that um, Manila Sofroni uh, yes. are unable to be with yes, us tonight, indeed. but I know he would be encouraging oh, the house of God to praise yes, the Lord. Yes. So yes, I'm sure that he's praising the Lord wherever he's yes. at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are thankful for the opportunity yes. to be back yes, God. Uh, with God's people. Amen. Yes, indeed. Miss um, Fancy Shoes there. And our new husband, John, I'm glad to see them. They've been out to Canton a couple of times, and we always enjoy their company, and it's good to see. Well, most of everyone here is family anyhow, but it's really good to see each and every one of you. Yes, Amen. We appreciate you coming. Now, I don't know, I don't know what this means. So uh, I'm from a little further north, and when we have a guest speaker, we usually put a, a courtesy bottle of water out for them. Uh -huh. You guys gave me four. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that means, but I hope you're comfortable. You got beautiful new views. They look great. Thank you. So I'm assuming that um, this is an indication of how long you want me to preach. <laughs> <laughs> so just get comfortable. Kick your hands off. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But it is um, an honor to be able to present the gospel. Amen. Yes. Amen. Tonight for a text, I'm going to give you plenty of time to turn there because I'm going to tell you something <laughs> while you turn there. Uh, Revelation, I don't know if you can find that. That's in the back of the Bible, the very last book. So um, if you have trouble, just wave your hand and Charla or Ellie or somebody from up north will come help you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right. Just yeah. Michigan, yeah. <laughs> Boo to the blue. Boo to the blue. Uh, we like the Buckeyes. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2 It's good to see each and every one And uh, it always does my heart really well to see Lizzie um, I, I think she may be one of our modern day um, saints That yes. has to endure a lot of yes. adversity But thank God for her testimony When Jessica was uh, introducing that song About he's more than enough yes. I, I thought about Lizzie I thought about how um, I think you guys just celebrated Mother's Day, yes, right? Yes, indeed. And she got the award for the youngest mother, uh -huh. but in all the years of serving the Lord, I believe she would tell you that he's more than enough. More than enough, yes. More indeed. than enough to see her through every adversity yeah. that she's dealt with. Amen. And we are thankful for her testimony. Yeah. Praise that God. That she's still keeping the faith. Amen. There's something unique tonight, and also all these fertile people. Janice had a baby, one on the way back here. Yes. Nick, I don't know how you did it. You can explain it to me after church. Uh, I like graphs and maps and pictures, so you can draw me whatever you want. No, I'm kidding. Terry's like, show me too. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but tonight we're going to take a look at familiar text. Uh, it's probably nothing that you haven't read or seen or yes. become familiar with. In Revelation, I, I know that it seems like when things start happening with Israel, mm -hmm. and if you've been watching current events since yeah. April of 2023, you know that that's kicked off some biblical things. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to be preaching tonight on eschatology or end time things or the book of Revelation, um, unless you want me to. But anyhow, um, tonight the goal is something I believe that the Spirit of God is trying to emphasize to the modern day church. Now, I'm going to say this. You can agree with me, disagree with me. It's, it's really, uh, it, it's not going to cost us heaven or hell uh, if we agree or disagree. But I believe that in every generation, I believe that there is a picture of each one of the seven churches in every generation. I don't believe that we're going through different generations to see the church of Thyatira, although we can say that in this generation... We do have some folks that are part of the modern day church that are a lot like Thyatira and Laodicea. Some that are lukewarm, yes. neither hot nor yeah. cold, right? Yeah. So we're not we're not going down that road. But I, I want us for an understanding tonight to know that in every single generation, you have different times when the church is in different phases of yes. these seven. Yes. Yes. And tonight I want to pick on Pergamos. Uh -huh. It's not that I want to pick on Pergamos. Uh, but this is the one that the Lord has put yeah. into my spirit. Yes. So I've given you ample time to find Revelation 2 if you would like, and, and you are able, to stand for the reading of the word. We're going to start it there in verse 12, and we're going to read down through 17. 
After we read, we will pray, and then you can sit back on those nice padded pews where my hip would love to be. <laughs> All right. The Apostle John writes to the church at um, Pergamos through the Holy Ghost, and he says, now this is, in my Bible, it's in red. What does that mean? Jesus is speaking to his church. All right. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, These things saith he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and when thou dwellest, I'm sorry, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was faithful, was a faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Interesting, isn't it? But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come quickly. I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now listen close, because this is where we're going to take the bulk of our text tonight. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Father, we thank you for your word tonight, and Lord, we thank you that you have counted me worthy to put me in this ministry. So we ask tonight, Lord, that you help me, that you would go before me, Lord, that you would speak to every heart, prepare every fallow ground. God, that it would be ready to receive the word of the Lord, that it would not return unto thee void, but accomplish that which you have set it forth to do. Lord, we ask that you hide me behind the blood-stained cross of Jesus Christ. Lord, and anoint me afresh with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. There's two times in this particular part of the uh, word of God that we hear him talk and mention the sword of the Spirit. The first time he mentions it, he says that he holds to the two-edged sword. Yeah. And he also goes on to say that the sword of the Lord is what we are to accomplish the task at hand. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. Yeah. So just pray for me because uh, if you know anything about coming to West Virginia with that group of people, <laughs> uh, it, it will wreck your nerves before you get here. Uh, but nevertheless, I want to talk to you for just a few moments about what the Word of God is saying here. A lot of us preachers, uh, Jeff, I'll pick on him, and Robert, and Pastor Geneva, and Luana, we like to talk about the Laodicea in church, and we like to talk about how lukewarm everybody is. Yeah. But do you know what I find in the Scripture today is there's an emphasis on the church at Pergamos for a reason. And the reason is because they were getting away from the Word of God. Uh -huh. They were getting away from the sword of God. Yes. Now listen, because in this generation, I believe we have literally uh, witnessed the great falling away that is spoken of in Thessalonians. In Thessalonians. Yes. I believe that we've seen the great falling away. The, the Greek word for that is apostasy. Yes. The apostasia, the act of falling away, where the church has not only left um, the very basic foundations of, of salvation, but they have abandoned the word of God. Yes. They've fallen away from the truth of the word. Now I'm going to give you an example. What we once called, and you might call, oh, here we go with this. But I want us to get back to where we want to be in front of us. What we once called sin, we now longer label it sin because we're afraid of offending somebody. And what we once held is righteousness and holiness and right living and what God expected from us. We no longer want to talk about that because we don't want to be considered close minded but in this particular point, uh, portion of scripture, the apostle John, through the spirit of God, is penning these words. And Jesus is saying, you have forsaken my word. Yeah. You, you've, you've held to my name. Uh -huh. 
I don't know how many of you have ever read this in Isaiah, but the Bible says that in the last days there'll be seven women to one man. Yes. Right? Yes. And I want you to think about this because here we have seven churches running after one man, Christ Jesus. And the problem is this. That what Isaiah was prophesying is where we're living today. Uh -huh. yeah. We've got seven churches that will share one word and they'll sit and they'll divide yeah. it up and yeah. they'll say this yeah. portion's for you. And this we can't even get a church anymore without having campus churches. Uh -huh. Now I ain't preaching against no campus church. No, Don't get me wrong. No, no. Some of the greatest men that I get fed by spiritually are pastors of campus churches. Yes, yes. But what becomes dangerous is when we have one campus church, and I'm thinking of one particular in our area, we have one in Dover, and that pastor leaves on Sunday morning from Canton, and he goes to Dover, and he preaches there. Yeah. Next week, you can find that preacher in Belton Village, but uh -huh. all those folks have to watch him from a screen. Uh -huh. So what we've done is we've had seven different women, uh -huh. seven different churches, yeah. Poor, sitting a ration, if you will, what is important for this congregation, what's important for this congregation, yes. and we're rationing out the word of yeah. God yes. based on our likes and our wants and our desires. Yes. Uh -huh. And what we see here is we have seven women going after one man, mm -hmm. but there's issues in each city. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm trying to get to the 17th yes. verse, yes. Yes. but i got to get this straight first. Yes. Watch what he says there in, in uh, 12. It says, These things saith he which, which has the sharp sword with two edges. I, I know we know that he is referring to himself, Christ Jesus. Yes. And he's saying, I, I, I'm not worried about what church doctrine is. Uh -huh. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. I, I don't care about the rules and the yes. regulations you made in your bylaws. Uh -huh. But I'm holding a sword that has two edges. Uh -huh. It cuts going and it cuts. Yeah. It, it's so sharp. It's a scalpel that divides both the soul and the spirit. Yeah. Can you do that? Oh. Can you tell me when I'm operating out of my spirit? Can you tell me when I'm operating out of my, uh, my soul? No, you're not able to do that. But the word of God is a. Right. And the Bible says that Jesus is looking at this particular church of Pergamos. And he's saying to them, I'm, I'm holding the only tool. That you'll be judged by. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. We we oftentimes want to line up with church doctrine, uh -huh. and sometimes we'll adhere to other denominational or church doctrines yeah. so that it opens up an opportunity for us to go where we yeah. need to go and do what we need to function with. But there's only one truth mm -hmm. that King Jesus is worried about tonight. Mm -hmm. And when you stand before him, you'll give an account based on yeah. this word yeah, 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 and yeah. no other. Yeah. Right. See, and what we've done is we, I I'm, I'm promise you, I'm getting there. Praise I'm God. slow, but Praise sure. God. You know what I mean? I'll get there. But what we've, what we've come to the conclusion of is we will esteem the doctrine of men mm -hmm. above the word of God. Yes. We, we fall prey to those seven women, mm -hmm. those seven churches yes. running after uh, one man. And instead, we, we hold on to the names, Harry. Oh, I'm a Christian, right? I am. Oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah, absolutely. I'm saved. Yes, yes, yes. I go to church. But the problem is, is we know his name, yes. but we don't know his word. Amen. Amen. Paul said that I might know him uh -huh. and the power of his resurrection. And we like to stop right there. Yes. Spring is my favorite time of year. I like when everything that was dead, yes. it starts coming back. Yes, yeah. thank God. But he goes on to say, and to know the fellowship of his sufferings, yes. being made conformable unto his death. See, yes. nobody wants to talk about that yes. anymore. But let me tell you something. Here's the problem. Pergamus was in a place that had a, a reputation for being known as the seat of Satan. Uh-huh. I don't, I'm not a dentist, all right? So I'm not trying to pull teeth. You'll either take this word, because I ain't got nothing else, and I'm not changing it now, because I'm too deep in. Uh, you'll either take this and ask God, the Holy Ghost, Lord, what are you saying to me? Or you'll be judged by this word when you stand before me. So the, it's not on me. It's not The blood's not on my hands, all right? I, I've, after so many years of doing this, 26 to be exact, I'm, I'm done worrying whether about not you like it, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to go to McDonald's and eat. You ain't going to starve me to death. I'll tell you that right now. So here's the problem. I think it was Wendy's that had the commercial that said, where's the beef? Or maybe it was uh, Burger King. 
No, it wasn't no Arby's. Arby's wasn't even thought of when I was about <laughs> But here's the deal. <laughs> you see what I mean about the struggle to get here and to be able to keep your mind on Jesus and come with him? But here's the deal. Oftentimes, we want to, like the seven women in Isaiah, we want to associate ourselves with the name. We wear the t-shirt, we get the bumper sticker, we buy the chain cross, we put the signs in our yard, and we don't know any more about the holy word of God than we know him. We go through a form and a fashion, and there's no truth to it. I, I, I saw this week there was somebody, I think it was a church sign, that said not coming to church is like being married and not going home. Let's forget about the religious act of coming to church. How many of us would say that we actually get in the word of God at home? How many, uh, I, I, you don't have to raise your hand, it's a rhetorical question. We'll save altar time for you to take that out with the Lord. But how many of us would literally say that when I'm at home, I open up my Bible, and if I know I'm going to have a busy day, I get up early to seek the Lord? How many, now look here, it's 2024. So some of us young cats, nothing like Geneva, but some of us young people, we know exactly that we've got these smartphones. Mine don't even work down here, but we got smartphones, and I can get Bible apps that will give me daily Bible plans, set an alarm, and a reminder that I should read the Word. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. And I'm going to ask you how many of us get in the Word to say that not only do I know the author, but I know what the author wrote. Yeah. Yeah. I venture to say that our lives would look different if we knew what the word said. Amen. Amen. Right. True. Truth anyway. So there's a couple of issues that the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, that John is writing that Jesus has said that there's issues in the church. Mm -hmm. He said, one, the leadership has taught the doctrine of Balaam. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He said, I got an issue that the pastors and the teachers and the evangelists yeah. and the preachers, yeah. that, that they come into the churches and they're teaching the doctrine of Balaam, that it's okay for them. Right, now watch this. Yeah. Are you ready? It's okay for them to live any old way that they want when there's been a standard that's been set. No, uh, no, uh. James tells us, right? I'm going to show you. Now, we know that today, rightly dividing the word of God, that eating meat that was sacrificed to idols, and Paul tells us, he says, just be thankful for whatever's put yeah. before you, and eat it, and if yeah. it offends your brother, don't do it, but just be thankful for it, and eat it, and enjoy it, right? Yeah, that's that's right. what the word teaches us. So we understand. But I want you to listen to this, because in James' day, they wanted to make sure that they were not offending God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And James writes, and he says, make sure that you're not eating these things that are strangled uh, that has strangled yeah. blood in them yeah. or that you're offering them to fa false and pagan gods. Uh -huh. See, because at one time there was a standard that they was adhering to. Yeah. And Paul, uh, John, Jesus says, let's just, uh, where the rubber meets the road. Jesus says to the church at Pergamos, he says, I got a problem with your leadership yeah. Yeah. because they're telling you you can do anything you uh -huh. want and get to heaven. Yeah. Can, I, can I be Amen. bold in the house of God tonight? That's a damnable lie. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, look at that fat preacher from Canton. He's cussing. No, if you believe that, you're damning yourself yeah. Yeah. and it's damnable. It is damnation to you. Oh, I can just do whatever because the blood of Jesus it just covers all the sin, and, and God is just so full of grace that he's gracious. Well, watch this, because then they go on, and he says, I even have a problem with the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans did? Now, look here, Nick. Where's Nick? Nick, Nicholas started out okay at one point. As a matter of fact, he was divided and set apart as a deacon. Acts chapter 7, verse 6, one of those two. And he was fine and, and started out and he started well, but then he got into what we would call it today in our modern theology, hyper grace. Uh -huh. That you yes. can just yes. sin and yes. sin and sin and the grace of God will just keep abounding. No. No. See, the problem is this. What Pergamos did is they never realized, never understood that he wanted to write them a new name. Yeah. Yeah. Why in the world would he give them a white stone with a new name? Why would Jesus take the time and say, this is offensive to me in the last day church, that there's going to be some churches that's going to have this doctrine that is 
practiced among Balaam that you can just do anything that you want. Have and, and listen, I want you to understand something. I'm not here to tell you what sin. You should have the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spirit of the living God should be on the inside yeah, of you, yeah. convicting you of sin, yes. convicting you of judgment, yes. and reproving you. Yes. That's what John 16 yeah, says. Yeah. The Spirit of God should be the one that, that's drawing you to yeah, read His yeah, Word. Yeah. So if there's no drawing to read the Word, if there's no drawing to study the Word, mm -hmm. I'd venture to say the Holy Ghost went to sleep on you. Yeah. Uh -huh. But is that even scriptural? No. Because no, He is the God that neither slumbers nor sleeps, Amen. and He keeps His eye continually on the people of Israel. So the point I'm making to you is God hasn't changed. No. Where's the conviction of the Spirit of God? Why is this church, Pergamos, saying that in every generation it's going to rear, rear its ugly head and cause saints to have no identification with things that are holy, righteous, nor will they be set apart. And they're going to believe God is just a God of hyper grace. Do not get me wrong. I do believe the scripture, and I believe that the word says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. But if I continue without the conviction of the Holy Ghost, and I can do those things that I did before I gave my heart to Jesus, I can do them, and there's no more any sin or remorse for me, I ain't what I say that I am. That's right. And it's time that the church, leadership in the church, call those things that are, that call, stop calling, stop putting all these gray areas in the word. The word of God is in black, white, and red. I know that. She might cancel me by tomorrow evening. That's okay. I'll go back home. No, no. I want to be one truth. We love the truth. I'm not. I'm not here to pry. I mean, I, listen, she, uh, Pastor Geneva, I almost just was too formal, uh, familiar with her. I, Geneva didn't invite me down here to preach because I need an opportunity to preach. No, absolutely not. I get several opportunities to yes. preach and teach all week long. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if that was your your purpose, oh, okay. then then don't invite me no. back. That's a bold statement, but I mean that because right. I got work I can do in camp. Yes. Just like, mm, don't, don't speak for me. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. My motive ain't to come down here and blast nobody. I don't know what you do week to week. I, I don't teach Sunday school or Bible study. Here, I don't. I, and, and as far as I know, I only see sermons some, once in a while when Jeff sends them to me on uh, YouTube because I'm sort of illiterate when it comes to getting where I need to get with, on those things. The problem isn't me finding fault with the church. It's the Holy Ghost in me. Amen. Yes. And if the only reason is because you wanted to hear Jessica sing, or <laughs> let's not kid ourselves, I'm pretty, but you didn't come to see that pretty smiling face. And no, I do not dye my hair. <laughs> What's the motive? Mine is just to deliver the mail. Amen. So, the, so John is saying, Jesus is saying to John, write these things because leadership is leading people straight to hell. And here's the problem, John. My sheep are lazy and dumb and won't read the scripture for themselves. Everybody wants spoon fed. Everybody wants to buy the apps that break it down for them. We seek out the preachers that we like. The things that tell us what we like to hear. And if ever we've lived in the time that the word of God is testifying of itself, that we're living yes. in an apostasy, yes. it's today. Yes. Jesus is going to return soon, yes. I believe. Yes. Yes. And I look, now look, I, I know uh, some churches, when they invite you, they'll say, hey, we saw your teaching on this. We want you to come and share that with our church. And I don't have a problem doing that. Holy Ghost usually spins things anyhow yes, different way right. because yes, he knows who the, who's in the congregation. I don't. No. But if you wanted me to teach on eschatology, I could tell you that right now we live in a time when all of, the, you know, between Malachi and Matthew was 400 years of silence. Yes. Some call it a brass heaven where brass is always represent, representative of judgment. Yes. So God held his peace. Mm -hmm. He no longer spoke to man. And the ministers of God, the priest, was not able to minister to him. And he judged them for 400 years. He said, I've given them enough of the law and the prophets. 
Now, why? I'm, I'm trying to show you a truth. Yeah. Behold, I show you a great mystery. But anyway, he said, I've given them the law and the prophets. I've given them the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Everything that's testifying of my son Jesus that's yeah. coming, I'm going to wait for 400 years and let's see if they recognize me when I get there. Amen. And the word became flesh Amen. and dwelt among them. Amen. And they beheld his glory Amen. as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. And they didn't know him and crucified him anyhow. Amen. They called him a blasphemer. Amen. They put guards outside the tomb to lie and say that they faked his resurrection. They didn't know him. And today you and I have the entirety of the word of God. Amen. And when Jesus comes, there's an apostate oh church and he'll, they oh will not God. know him either. Do we not see? Right now, okay, I'm, I, I, oh, I'm just going to say, I'm not happy about these men falling. I'm not happy that their ministries have fallen apart. But we've got men and women like Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer that has openly confessed mm -hmm. that they have fleeced the sheep of oh God for years God, God. for riches and great wealth. Oh and many people have had their eyes on them. Yes. And when they fall and away from the faith, yeah. Yeah. many went with them. Yeah. 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 Do you know why? Because the people that sit and listen to them did not study to show yeah. themselves Amen. approved. Amen. Amen. Jesus is, this is a season where, season where the Holy Ghost is exposing some yes, things yes, to get his bride yes, ready so that it shall be without spot, wrinkle, yes, or blemish. Yes, yes, but we've gotten so used to people telling us Jesus is coming that we, we think, well, you know, Israel's had his troubles before. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah, if you want me to, I can teach on eschatology. I can take you all through it. I, that's one of my favorite topics, but tonight, my she didn't give me an assignment, so I asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want? And here's the point. Yes. He wants to give you a new name. Yes. Yes. You're sitting in the seat of Satan. Yes. Oh, my God. oh my God. You're sitting in the same place of Pergamum. Mm -hmm. In the seat of Satan. You're still identifying as the same thing that you yes. were before. That you so-called became a Christian oh in name. Yes. And you're sitting in the place where Satan dwells. Yes. Yes. God and the Holy Ghost are not. I'm sorry. Satan and the enemy, Satan and the Holy Ghost are not going, as uh, Big Eddie uh, Williams used to say, God is not going to rent no house off the devil. No. Either he's going to purchase you with his precious blood, yeah. and you'll be his, yeah. or he'll say, depart from me, I never knew. Amen, that's right. Playing church is over. Yeah. Amen, brother. Paul said in the 13th chapter, of, it's high time. Yes. To awaken on your yes. righteousness. Yes. Uh, you you want to hear what I think is funny? Let's, let's rewind about 52 years ago. That was before I was born, even thought of or conceived. I'm only 45. I know I look 25, but I'm, you know, hey, uh, with the dyed hair and all. Anyhow, I think me and Ari go to the same hairdresser. I'm starting to thin out a little on top. But I remember as a child, I remember as a kid, they used to, this is no joke, they used to preach that Jesus was coming so hard yeah, yeah, and yeah. that hell was so hot. Yeah. I remember being in Hills. Anybody remember what Hills yeah, was? Yeah. Gold Circle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clarkins, guys remember those yeah, stores? Yeah, yeah. I remember being a kid and in the store and I would be, I, I'd get sidetracked playing with the toy on the shelf because my mom and dad wasn't going to buy me nothing. Yeah. And, and I would be playing with this toy and I'd turn around and Donna or my mom or somebody I was with, they'd be gone. Yeah. And I was a kid. I think four or five years old, running around, nervous and crying. Yeah, yeah. My, I didn't think they abandoned me. No. I thought Jesus had come oh, back. Yes, I thought, oh my yes. God, and I'd have nightmares yes, and I'm yes, going to be left here yes, during the tribulation. Yes. But we have made a joke out of it. Oh, yes. Yes. We become gainsayers. Yes, yes. We, will pro we become prophets, all right? P-R-O-F-I-T-S. Yes. We've sold our books, we've made our albums, we gave yes. our DVDs. Yes. We, you know, and it's so sad because we've made a joke out of something that is becoming yeah. so evident to people that are seeking the Lord yeah. that we're living in an apostate church oh, age yeah. and many don't even know him. No, no you want another example of how I know people don't know the Lord? And I'm not throwing this at you, but she said it tonight and it just triggered a thought. You walk in some churches, God is love. 
I'm going to shock you with this statement. God doesn't love everybody. No. What? No, we all in here tonight, we're not all children of God. What? What? That goes against everything that's been drilled in us. From the rainbows yeah. to the parades mm -hmm. to all the human rights, oh my God. the yellow equal signs on oh, the blue yeah. backgrounds yeah. all throughout D.C. Yeah. What? No! Uh -huh. In order for that statement to be true, mm -hmm. we have to go to the word of God and redefine what love is. Yes. Yes. That's an apostate position. Yes. It's me taking the word of God, falling away from the truth mm -hmm. uh -huh. so that what I say is acceptable to everyone. Uh -huh. Oh, we're all God's children. No, we're not. No, we're not. The Bible says, Jacob, I love. Yep. Esau. Esau. Well, I wonder what that means. It means exactly what it says. Yes. The Edomites, and maybe we'll get into that tomorrow night, but the Edomites were the people of Esau. Yes. And they sought out to destroy God's people. And you're going to tell me God loves them anyhow? No, no, no. We're living in an... God is wanting to get... Okay, so here's, here's a leader in the book of John, St. John, chapter 3. Here's a leader in the, in the church of that day. His name is Nicodemus. Yeah. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, right? Yeah. And he says, uh, I know you're a man sent from God. Yeah. Why? Because you do great things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And Jesus cuts through all the mess, and he gets to the heart of the matter, and he says, you must be born again. You must be born of water and of the Spirit. See, the church has done well, boarding people, and they, this is even an error, boarding people of water. We like to say that means we take them down there to the river and baptize them, but that isn't exactly what that means. But the problem is, is we miss the spiritual birth. Yeah. Because yeah. we take a bunch of sinners that's had an emotional experience mm -hmm. and take them down there to the water and get them all wet. Uh -huh. And we declare yeah. the name over them, uh -huh. bring them up out of the water and say that they're our brothers and sisters. Sit them in the church for a week or two and then give them a job. Uh -huh. no. no wonder we're in an apostate right. position. Right. No wonder there's a falling away. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 14, it was through much right. tribulation yeah. that they did enter the yeah. kingdom Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. See, you must be born again. Amen. I'm not saying it. I didn't, tell, I didn't call John up. Uh, I didn't have a medium experience and light six black candles and a white one. And go into another realm and go back into time and exactly. confer with the Apostle John while he was sitting there on the Isle of Patmos looking for a seagull to eat. I, I don't have that ability. I don't want that ability. No. I didn't say that the church has messed up and has led my people in apostasy. Mm -hmm. The word says what that. So tonight I'm telling you the, the desire is that he writes a new name yeah. on a white stone. White stone. Mm -hmm. Why white? I heard somebody say it. Purity. We cannot be pure apart from the blood of Jesus. We cannot be born again of the spirit apart from the blood of Jesus. And one thing that the church has stopped teaching about is the blood of Jesus. We've talked about prosperity enough. We, we, we talked about praise and worship. I, I, can, I remember when we didn't need but we on Bonford, we didn't even have a piano for a long time, and my dad could play. Thanks to Luana, my dad could play a, a little bit, and, and we didn't have a piano for a long time. But that didn't hinder us from going in there and singing praises unto the, the Lord. Now we, I want, just think about this. Now we have Sirius Radio, we have FM, AM full of different yeah. radio stations yeah. singing gospel songs yeah. that are full of lies. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I'm not picking, I, I, there's a lot of songs we sing in our church, yeah. and, and when there's when there's error in them, Jessica, uh -huh. she and I, we have a talk, uh -huh. and that song we don't care to hear anymore. Uh -huh. Thank you for trying, right? Uh -huh. But who's holding the standard? Uh -huh. Because it all started with just one little lie. Uh -huh. You eat 
of the tree, yeah. you'll surely not die. Oh, yeah. He didn't say he was going to turn purple and your hair was going to grow out pink. Yeah. I've seen some of them too, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> he, he didn't come with some great big imagination. It was just an apostasy. Yeah. It was just one little lie. You know what? He, just look how good the fruit is for tasting. You, you really should take it and try. God is trying to keep something from you. Adam, you, you won't. Just one lie. Added one word to what God said. And the whole world fell away into apostasy. And now we've got lies sewn into worship music that gets into our soul. I remember when you had that car wreck. And you, we talked about it last time he was here. And he's sitting rocked to the beat of that song over and over. And there's some Christians listening to these songs full of non scriptural truth. Let, let's just call it what it is lies. And it gets sewn into the heart. And before you know it, it is done led us astray. Because now, if I want to sing the song without conviction, I got to change what this means. Yeah, change that. Yeah. Right, look here, I can preach this to Canton. I didn't come down here to, to ruffle yeah. your feathers. I ain't making any apologies. No, I didn't no, come to ruffle your no, feathers. No, I didn't come no, to sit on your no, pool or put my no, finger in your Kool-Aid. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? What I'm telling you is this. God is finding issues with churches like Pergamos. Yes. That they keep identifying with the throne of Satan. That they've never really been redeemed. No, no. That, 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 that all of the works of the flesh are still prevalent in their life. And there's no longer any conviction in their life. That's right. yeah. Preachers like me don't even get invited places very often. And when I do, it's usually one and done. Uh -huh. Saves my time. I got God has given us somewhat of a school yes, for training. God. Praise God. That is unhappy with what you can get on TV yeah. in and on Inspire and all those other. I'm not saying there's anything wrong no, with those. No, no. But I wish the church had a spiritual ear to hear. Amen. Isn't that what John, what John wrote? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We've been rocked to sleep and coddled to death with lies, and we can't even recognize truth anymore. Oh, my God. My God, y'all. Holy Spirit, move the blindness. Help us, dear Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Every single person. How much time do I got? Careful. Every single person. That God had a great plan for in their life had to give a new name. Yes. Amen. Abraham could no longer Abram wow. could no longer be identified as a maker of idols, no. but he had to become Abraham, the yes. father of nations. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jacob could no longer be identified as a swindler, a cheat, and a steal, no. but he had to become known as a prince with God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Peter, Simon, could no longer just be known as Simon, the one that hears, uh -huh. the son of Jonas, Bar Jonas, yes. he, he had to become Peter, who was a rock that hurt and wasn't yes. going to be swayed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Saul could no longer go about being a murderer, thinking that he had a better idea than what Jesus had, yes. and persecuting those that was in truth. He had to be changed to Paul yes. to yes. preach the gospel. Yes. Amen. You have to have a new name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. You must be born again. Praise God. You must be born again. And if you're identifying with everything that you used to be that was not pure, you're not safe. You're not safe. That's harsh. I, I, I can take you, I won't tonight, we're not in Bible study, but I can take you to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Maybe it's fourth chapter, I forget right off the top of my head. And I could list out all yes, the works yes. of the flesh. Yes. It's five, chapter five. five. I could list out all the works yes. of the flesh. And you, when, when, it's Christine, isn't it? When Christine saw John, we ain't going to go down that road. But I'll bet you she wasn't thinking about, I will bless the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I put $100 on it. Charlo, when we go to climbing in bed, we ain't putting on casting crowns. <laughs> no, ain't doing it. <laughs> we already know that Char that Jessica said that Jason was more than enough. We ain't going down that road. Because no. when she was singing that, she wasn't talking about Jason. <laughs> Listen real close to what I'm telling you. We know what the works of the flesh are. Yeah. Yeah. We know what makes the flesh 
Mm -hmm. Feel good. Yeah. Yes. Nick keeps looking the other way when I, I talk back there. He just won't look at me no more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been the picture thing that I, I, I said. Yeah. Listen, we, we don't have to uh, draw pictures. We, we sit in here, we know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. If I can fulfill the lust of my flesh and there's no conviction in my life, I need to find me a place and make Jesus Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. Because what we're doing is we're sitting in a very dangerous seat yes. of Satan. Yes. We're sitting in a place. You know, when I looked at the word Pergamum, do you, I'm trying to quit. Frida? Yes. Frida? Frida? <laughs> I'm trying to quit. And I'm, I'm, I think this might be my last point because I really don't want you guys to, like, hate me. Anyway. Well, we love you. The we word? Love you. Huh? You can't hate you. Okay. Here, anybody need a bottle of water to get comfortable? Okay. I looked up, I looked up the Greek meaning of the word Pergamum. And uh, some of you Bible scholars in here want to throw it out at me, what it means? It means to be elevated or exalted. We've got a ministry right now that has the same name only in English called Elevation. Did you hear that, Jessica? Yes. See, I, I I let them know too. I, I have an I have an obligation to make sure that they know the truth. My, I, I'm at the age, and I, I want to make this real quick. But I'm at the age, Terry, where I feel like I'm losing control. You know what I mean? Because Jessica, I could pretty much uh, say what I wanted to say, and she'd sort of change her actions a little bit and adhere. And, and Ellie was that way. Now Ellie went on her first date last night. See? Wow. So <laughs> Jessica up and got married on me. Yeah. I love you though, Jason. <laughs> um, so I, I'm losing my influence there because now I just talk to you. She's like, okay, and does what she wants anyhow. <laughs> and I'm here's the key though. I'm you're getting ready to dedicate your baby to the Lord. I'm praying now. See, rather than instructing, now I'm praying, Lord, remind them what you taught them. That's yeah. right. Yes. Right. That the influence that I am, Lord, let them remember the yeah. godliness of the truth of your word. Yeah. Right, brother. Okay, now I'm off my soapbox. But I looked up Pergamum, and it means to be highly exalted or elevated. It will You'll be hard-pressed to find a ministry on TV today that doesn't try to elevate you in some way. Yeah. Churches that seat 35,000 people, and I'm not trying to pick on nobody, no, no. but their wife, the minister's wife said, you're not praising God because he's worthy. You're doing it for yourself. Oh. What? See, it's all about me. Oh, no, no. If, if I can get elevated, if I can get, and listen, I believe that the church should be a place where we come and lift up Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah. we leave, we should be in better spirits yeah, than we yeah. were when we got here. Yeah, if we were sick, we should be healed. Yeah. If we were broken, we should be fixed. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But he's our goal. He's yeah. our goal. He's, he's, he's and now yeah. you do, you sing beautifully. But if it is for you to get an, uh, an accolade and a hand clap, yeah, you got yeah. it. You're right. Yeah. But if you're singing to lift up Jesus, yeah. your reward will be great. Isn't that what he taught us? Yeah. He said, lift me up that I might draw all men unto you so you can be exalted. Yeah. No. 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 That I, Jesus, might be lifted up. And I would draw all men unto myself. But Pergamos is a place where in Canton, I don't know if it's anything like this. You know, we are slightly a bigger city. Uh, we got about three colleges instead of just one formal one. But here's the deal. Uh, we, we've got really nice, big uh, college, uh, arena, what's the word I'm looking for? Auditoriums, churches, right? And when you go there, they tell you you're going to have a worship experience. Because I, I just need to, I need to experience. And we sing to you, and we have light shows, and smoke, and background effects. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as Jesus is being lifted up. But the goal is we live in a seeker friendly society, AKA also known as an apostate church, where I have to provide a product that keeps you coming back because there's bills that have to get paid in a $40 million facility. 
Jesus is not enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm saying to the church, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Are you still comfortable in the seat of Satan? You still comfortable doing the things in which you, you've always done, but there's no conviction? I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying this is you guys, but for me, uh, the Holy Ghost has been tightening me up a little, fine tuning me in some areas. Things that I once did. And I'm just going to be honest with you. Things that I once did that I just thought, oh, it ain't a big deal. Now the Spirit of God is checking me on on some things, and I'm not going to tell you what they are. Maybe we'll talk later on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when when I'm too busy during the day, sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll wake up to just um, you know go see John. Yeah. And um, the Spirit of God will make me uncomfortable with something I said earlier. Yes. Okay. Uh, sometimes I get ready to say something ornery, and I'll just ah uh, never mind. I'll just say just change my mind about that. Yeah. Why? I don't want to be deceived. No, no. I don't want. I don't want to be ashamed. No, that it, no. It's one thing to know the ins and outs of the book. It's another to know the author. Yeah. Amen. I know the author through the book. Yes, that's right. That's right. Not some yeah. experience that I had when I was elevated. No, no, no. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Homosexual drag queens, everything you name it. Oh, oh yeah. We, we, I'm, I'm, hey, the world will do what the world wants to do. They, the world was the world when Jesus. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. Because we redefined every standard, every principle. We become Pergamum again. Is there a new name written down? Oh my God, my God, my God. Is there a stone yes, my God, my God. that bears your new name? My God, my God. I was sitting in church last Sunday morning. I forget what we were. We were in the middle of worship, and this is it. I'm done. We were in worship, and, and this, I haven't just been like sitting here idle. I've been asking God, God, what did you have me yes, to do? Yes, yes, you yes. can look at my tablet. Yes. You can go through my notes. Yes. You can see how many times yes. I've added. Yes, yes. And I'm sitting on the front pew. I think this will be the greatest blessing to you tonight. If you'll, you'll receive this. I'm sitting on the front pew where I always sit, and I'm meditating on this sermon, yes. not knowing where I want to preach it. I'm yeah. just asking God, what do yeah. you got? Yes. And the greatest blessing was that still small voice. And he said, Robert, do you know why I give you a new name? So that when the accuser of the brethren comes, I can say to him, I don't know him anymore. Yeah, right. uh -huh. That sin has been forgiven and forgotten. It has been removed from my servant as far as the east is from the west. Some of us are sitting in the seat of Satan in a state of apostasy, not knowing that we've not been born again because we went to some church, we said some prayer, we said something, and think we've got saved. Here's the litmus test. If I am what I was, mm -hmm. then I ain't. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> if there's no change in me, That's right, brother. if there's no conviction of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not trying to be deep. No. I'm just saying, yeah, hey, yeah. I know uh, your nephews, your cousins, Phil, uh, Collins, yeah. Coletta's boy. Yes. There has been a drastic change yes. in him. Yes. Drastic change. See, I, I was raised in church and was afraid of my dad that I didn't stray too far to get in a lot of stuff. Yeah. But when me and Phil are talking and he's sharing some things with me, and I'm just like looking at him side-eyed like, that can't be true. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then the conviction of the Holy Ghost comes, uh -huh. and he's repentant. Thank God. Yeah. And he, it's true. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Are we still sitting in the seat of Pergamum? No, no, no. We're of Satan where he dwells, and we don't know if we're saved or we ain't. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Lord, not out of malice tonight, but Lord, we just ask that the Spirit of God would take the word and deliver it for your glory. Lord, that if there'd be one that don't know you, that might be in a backslidden shape, they might be lukewarm. Father, they might even be deceived tonight. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word produces light that we no longer have to stay in darkness. So in Jesus' name, Spirit of God, we ask that you give them boldness tonight to respond, yes. to be born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Pastor.